Uh, today we're joined by uh, Marion Cotter from Stay City. Um, they talk to us a little bit about uh, sort of like career, or extended career in uh, hospitality. Yes, so I am Marion Cotter and I am the sales manager for Stay City Apart Hotels in Liverpool. Um, so with Stay City in Liverpool, we have two properties. So I um, manage both property sales for both properties. And my main job is to fill our rooms midweek with corporate business or travellers that are coming to the city and then on weekends with any leisure guests that want to come and stay and just to make sure they've got the best accommodation at the best rate available to them. When I finished school, um, I didn't want to go to college or uni. It was just I needed a break. It was just not something I wanted to carry on. So I wanted to take a year out. But my parents, I guess, like every other parents were like, you got to do something. So they put me on a train to Dublin to start an apprenticeship three days after my exams um, when I was 17 and said, off you go. So I took an apprenticeship route in Ireland with the Gresham Hotel in Dublin um, as a bartender. So it wasn't going into sales and going into revenue. I started off collecting glasses and sorting out stock behind the bar. Um, and then they moved me on to the restaurant and then from there i decided okay i actually like hotels so this isn't going to be something i just want to do for a year this is something i'm going to look at to do long term um and for the first 13 years of my career it was all about operations it was all about how to run the bars and the restaurants in hotels or in independent bars and restaurants as well um, and basically just to learn from the inside out because i'm a great believer in learning from the bottom up yeah. because then as you go on and as you progress there's nothing people can throw at you that you don't know or that you can't fix because you've done it from the bottom up um, and it is one of those industries where you can go on and you can make a great career for you so I worked my way up from an apprentice bartender to director of operations for Hard Day's Night Hotel in Liverpool um, a position which I heard, held a couple of years ago um, and it was great I loved every single minute of it so with operations you get to train people as well so if I get young guys coming in that want to learn more we can train them on the job it's not something that they need loads of experience to do um, they just have to be able to talk to people um, and working in operations it will get you out of your shell I was quite shy when I started because I'd moved to a big city I didn't know anyone and I wasn't shy when I was younger but that initial mm. move going from being a young kid in school to going into your first job this is the type of job that you have to come out of your shell because you're in front of people every day so you have no choice um i remember at the gresham hotel in dublin just outside our staff rooms there used to be a big long mirror before you went upstairs to um the operation floor and a big sign above it was you're an actress or you're an actor or an actress and you're going on stage now and it, it can be you can be anyone you want it doesn't mean you have to be you and then you can go back to being yourself once you finished your shift but for those however many hours yeah you're going on stage and you're playing you're playing a role you're helping people out and you're getting to know them um and I absolutely love that route. Um, then I hit uh, an older stage in my career where I was just getting to that age where I was getting missing time with my family because there's good and bad sides to operations. The great sides is you can make an amazing career out of it, but I'm not going to lie, there is long hours. Once you get your team set up around you, it's all about building a team around you. It does get easier, but they are long hours. You are the boss at the end of the day. So if something happens, it's you they're going to call. So it got to the stage in my career where I was like, oh, I'm missing time with my family, but I love the industry and I don't want to leave the industry. And it was someone I worked with that said, why don't you go into event management? I was like, OK, didn't know I could do that. <laughs> so um I didn't actually realize there was a job where someone could just do that. I just thought we did everything because as operations, you feel like you do everything. You were still selling and you were still talking. And But there is a job specific where you can just do that, where you can just go in and work office hours and sell events. So I went on to be the event manager for Hard Day's Night Hotel in Liverpool. Um, that was just, I think, one of the best experiences I ever had because the hotel wasn't opened. So I had to pre-open the hotel. And I'll never forget my first day because I hounded the GM for that job, but I'll never forget my first day. And he handed me a laptop and I had decided to move into sales about a year before that. So I didn't have loads of experience event wise. I had loads of hotel experience, but not loads of event or sales experience. And because I hounded the GM that much for a job, I think I sent him an email every week for months until I got a, an interview. Um, and I eventually got the job because he told me persistence pays off. So persistence yeah. will pay off if you keep at it. Um, and when I took that role, that very first day when he handed me my 
computer when I went into the pre-opening office because the hotel wasn't open. He handed me the desk and there was nothing on it, whereas I'd always work for chains. So there was always packages and there was always this and everything that you need to do your job was done for you. But with this job, it was just like there's nothing. And I remember sitting in front of the computer all day staring at a blank screen going, oh, no, I can't do this. I can't do. I think I panicked. Um, and then I remember going to my mother in law, who was absolutely brilliant. I was staying with her and she was like, you have chased this job for six months. Pull yourself together. You can do this. Yeah. So I did. And I was so proud of it. Um, I had to set up all the packages. I had to set up everything to do for weddings, for conferences. It was basically a blank canvas that the GM said, off you go, that's your department. And I remember when I left there, because I was there for there 10 years. So 10 years later, when I actually left there, watching what we had built from the very start with nothing on the books to doing over 100 weddings a year, to doing massive conferences and to bringing basically quarter of the revenue for the quarter of the yearly revenue for the hotel in that one little department with two of us. It was something I look back on and I have such great memories and so, I'm really proud, really proud of that period. Um, and again, it got to the stage where, OK, I've done this for 10 years. I still don't want to leave hotels because I still love them. But what do I do next? Because you do get a little bit bored within your career. You're like, OK, what do I do next? But I love the industry. So a position came up with Radisson um, to do revenue office manager. Again, something I'd never done. I'm just like, oh, go for it. Let's see what happens. And I did. <laughs> and looking enough, when I interviewed with them, they offered me the job because of not because of my revenue experience, but because of my hotel experience. They offered me the job 24 hours after my interview. And again, I had never done any college or uni or courses to help here. This is all about on the job learning and experience. Um, so with Radisson, I looked after a team of six in the office. So it was sales and revenue manager. Um, I was lucky enough with, with big chains, they do have clusters. So we always have someone in an, in an office in London that used to look after us. And we had a really good, close working relationship. Um, so with revenue management, what you do there is you have to sell your hotel um, and get the best rates for your rooms. So you've got to look at your markets. You've got to look at trends. You've got to look at what's coming into the city. So there's a reason that rates are higher on some weekends than other. It's about maximizing every little space you have in the hotel and using the best revenue um, you can to make sure your rooms are filled at all times. Um, and again, what I loved about that job and I loved about Radisson is they pushed me more towards the training side of it because I had trained quite a lot of staff on my way through as well. So they got me involved with Springboard um, and Springboard are an amazing charity. What Springboard do is we offer courses, um, free courses to get you into hospitality. Um, some of them are weekly, some are two weeks. So if you're looking for a career and a way in, they will bring you in. They will do your customer service um, training with you. They will do your first aid, your basic health and hygiene. There's a lot of courses when you come into um, health and hygiene in hotels. Hmm. Um, but they will also put you through to get your, um, it used to be called the BII, I'm sure my age now, I can't remember what the new form of it is, but it's basically they will put you through the course to get your license so that you can go on and run either a bar or a restaurant. You, all, you have to have that license. You have to have your personal license before you can go on and run that. And those courses cost quite a lot of money to do. But with Springboard, they actually will they include that in their course because they've got sponsorship from larger companies. So with Radisson, um, they bought me on, involved with Springboard about three and a half years ago. And I love that because I'm still involved with it. So I do get the opportunity to go out to schools and to colleges to talk about the different career paths in hospitality. Um, after 18 months, I've decided, OK, I know revenue now. Don't get me wrong. I don't know every side of it. Um, I was like, what's next? Uh, I needed another challenge because as much as I loved revenue in 18 months, I decided, OK, I like revenue and I know about it now, but it's not for me. And I was lucky enough to literally just called out of the blue and offered a job as a sales manager for three different properties for the No Group. Um, so I got to look after hotels in Liverpool and Chester between both. Um, and that's where I found my calling. Sales is definitely what I'm meant to do. Um, so with sales manager, what I love about this part of my role is I get to go to events. I get to meet so many different people. I get to talk about a job that I absolutely love. Um, as everyone says to sales, how do you become a good salesperson? To me, being a good salesperson is knowing your product 
and being able to talk to people and build relationships because people will buy people. It's all about building relationships. So be seen at events, go to events, be helpful. It's not always about what you can get from a person. It's how can you help them? And that way you will just build that great relationship that will hopefully stay with you. I've had some clients that have been with me since God, 10, 12 years that still book with me today, even though I've had different positions and different companies, but yeah. they still come back and talk to me today. Um, and so that's just a little taster of the different, I mean, I've had four different careers within hospitality, um, but there's so many other avenues you can go down. You can go down into the maintenance and engineering route because every hotel needs a maintenance manager and some are a little bit more complex than others. Um, you can go into the accountancy route because every hotel needs an FC. Again, the FC is up there with the GM. Um, and we've had people that we've trained that have come in and worked part time for us and have been taken into the accounts department, put under the wing of the FC. They've seen something in them. This one particular person I'm talking about started off as an assistant conference and banqueting waiter. We trained him, put him through his courses because they will invest in you if you stay with a company or loyal to the company and they see something in you, they will invest in you. So they put him through all of his courses. He is now financial controller for four different properties in Liverpool um, and all by 10 years ago, starting off as a conference and banqueting waiter because he didn't actually know what he wanted to do after school and just took the job to keep him going yeah. and ended up working in our accounts department and being put through the courses that you need to go on to be a financial controller. So there's so many routes, you've HR, you've the operations. There's so, the, the opportunities are endless, but unless we talk about them and talk about all the opportunities, no one knows, because I certainly didn't know when I was a bartender that I could go on and do all of these different things that I've done within the sector. What is the best bit about your job? What? Um, when I was an events manager, um, so it was events in Hard Days Night, the events department was solely minus well, not solely mine, it was run with a lot of different people, but I looked after the events department in High Days Night. Um, it was all the different people and all the different industries you get to speak to. I remember taking a call one day from a guy that was coming in to meet me. Um, he was looking to book a conference room for an event he wanted to run. And he was dissecting a reptile. I'm like, OK. And all I remember in my head before this guy came in, because that's what he told me on the phone was, what am I going to talk to him about? Because he worked in microbiology and I was like, I know nothing about microbiology. I was like, what am I going to talk? And we we're actually still friends. Like 12 years later, I'm still friends with uh, with this couple, him and his wife. And um, we ended up doing their events. Uh, we ended up doing them all the time for them. So it's, it's all the different people. Um, I got a call one time and they're like, Ryan, there's a group coming to Liverpool. Um, they've specifically requested your hotel. Can you help us out with them? When we actually got the list through, and I think this was, I was probably, I think my daughter was more excited, our Porsche was more excited about this than me. It was actually when Justin Bieber came to play in Liverpool. So <laughs> we got, and what he was, he was only 16 at the time, but I remember the excitement and the buzz around the city when he came. Um, I remember having to close down North John Street, well, the police closed down North John Street, which they weren't quite happy with that, but um, all the kids came out of school, because I remember our Porsche ringing me saying, it's Justin Bieber with you, and obviously you can't tell what guests you've got, because you've got to be, you know, you've, you've got to hold back, and yeah. I wanted to say, yeah, he is, but I can't tell you, and I was like, no, he's not, and he goes, well, all the girls from my school are outside your hotel, and I said, well, I better not see you outside this hotel from your school today, <laughs> Um so it's all the different people you get to meet. And again, like with the weddings, it was, I've dealt with thousands of weddings over the years. We built it up to do over a hundred weddings a year at Hard Days Night. And it's just all the different people you meet and helping them out. So yeah, I loved events, but it's pretty much the same, it's similar with sales. It's all the different people and all the different sectors you get to you get to meet all the time. Yeah. And that's what I love. I mean, I say I used to be quite shy. Um but it's, it's not the more you do it, you've got to put yourself out there. So the more you put yourself out and push yourself, which I'm lucky enough to have had absolutely amazing managers that I've worked under that have seen something and said, right, push yourself and go and do that. And I'm just like, oh, no. And I do it. And then like a year later, you're like, why was I so afraid of doing that? It's all about getting out and doing it and pushing yourself to do it. What have you found difficult? And have you had to make any sacrifices for your, for your career over the years? Yeah, yeah, there's been obviously when I was operations and again, I, I started off when I was 17, so I was quite young when I started off um, and doing the 16 hour days, which they can be 16 hour days. I've actually done a 24 hour shift in my time. It can be quite hard um, because you are you're sacrificing. 
I've sacrificed a lot of family events that I couldn't attend. Um, I couldn't attend one of my best friend's hen's parties because of a big event I had on at the time. Yeah, you do sacrifice. You do have to sacrifice things. Um, and I think that's what made me look at then and say, OK, I love the industry, but what else can I do? And I think that's what's so great about hospitality is if you do exhaust that avenue, you can say, OK, I want to go on and do that avenue. But um, I'm a people person, so I love dealing with people, but I'm not going to lie. You do get people shout at you. I've had people shout at me in my career. Um, you've got to take a stand back. People get upset. Um, you've got to be in, you've got to have empathy for them because you don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know what they've been through. So it could be something small, like their steak wasn't cooked right, and they'll probably go berserk over. But you don't know what's happened to them in that day, just like they don't know what's happened to us. But we put ourselves in that position. We know what we're getting into when we do hospitality. So the way I used to say to some of the younger guys, and it was actually great seeing some of them say this to the people they now train was, you've seen them for this one day. After that, you won't have to deal with them again. Um, so if you get something like that, you've got to put that into your head. Listen, don't know what's going on in their life. I only have to deal with this person for the next couple of hours and then I won't have to see them again. And yeah. just put on your smile, just put on that best smile. And it's hard to say not to let it get you because it can get you. So you've just got to try and not let it get you, which again, that comes with experience. That's something that I remember when I was younger, I probably would go away and cry somewhere if someone shouted at me, <laughs> which I've done. Uh, but now it's not, it's just like, listen, you don't know what's happened to that person. So it's take it on the chin, which can be quite hard. It will get easier the more experience you get because people are people and you don't know what happens to them on a daily basis. So yeah, the hours can be wrong. Dealing with irate customers can be hard, but again, you will get trained to do that. You will get, there is a lot of training available for, it's basically customer service skills. And that is the one thing hotels do have a lot of training is how, yeah. how you problem solve, how can you problem solve this issue? Um, and then when you go on to management, it's managing staff um, because you don't just manage their work life. You have to manage a lot of their personal life as well. And I know that sounds silly, but when you go on to management, they will come to you with your their personal problems because it can impact their job. So you do need to know about it. Um, so again, with the HR route in hotels, it's making sure that we can help them and support them in whatever way we possibly can. So yeah, there there is a lot. Don't, the good outweighs the bad, if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, it's not all roses. It's just I love what I do. But yeah, you do come up against some difficult people and some difficult circumstances that on the job training will help you. Um, and again, experience. Once you get more experience, that will help yeah. as well. For people wanting to go into hospitality, what qualifications and route ways would you recommend um, when looking at getting into the hospitality industry? So definitely, they definitely need to have customer service skills and everyone says, oh, anyone can do that. You can't. Not everyone can because there's some people like my husband hates anything like that. He's a truck driver. I put him in his truck. He wants to go. It's not suitable to everyone. You've got to have people skills. So customer service is is really, really important. Um, obviously, health and hygiene, because if you're doing operations, we've got to know about your allergens, your allergies. There's so many different and there's new ones coming every day. Um, so definitely, definitely health and hygiene needs to be looked at. And then maybe a basic sales skills, because if you're going into sales, I, I love sales because I do it by relationship building. But you also got to look at cold calling. Um, I did a course with um, Chris Dawson from Six Door um, last year online. And it was an online course because cold calling wasn't one of my favorite parts of the job, but it was something I needed to push up my skills on. So that course, um, Chris's course, really, really helped me to build my skills doing that as well. So if you could get it, maybe a cold calling course, yes, yeah. something to that effect would help you in the sales routes of it as well. You said you've worked in the industry for 20 years, you know, <laughs> very broad question, but what are you most proud of during that time? <sighs> Oh, good Lord. On the spot um, for that one. Um, I think definitely setting up Hard Day's Night from the beginning, setting up the events package and watching that grow over the years and um, developing the staff, developing some of the staff that I've worked with over the years. There's been some guys that I've worked with that started behind a bar and have now gone on to do sales or marketing or revenue and watch them grow and watching their careers grow over the years. I've absolutely loved that as well. Um, being the ambassador for Springboard, it's something that I never expected. And now the fact that I get out to go out and help young people get into the industry 
quite proud of that as well. There's a lot, there's, there's loads, I've opened bars, I've opened restaurants. Um, yeah, there's a lot that I'm proud of, um, but I think watching the people, watching the people I've worked with, watching their skills grow and I get, yes, setting up the, the, the packages for Hard Day's Night and the weddings, especially because I absolutely love that. And I'm still in touch with some of the couples that got married 13 years ago, watching them have families now and, and what, you know, still just chatting with them that I'm quite proud of that as well. You know, uh, there's going to be an, obviously young people who are interested in going into hospitality uh, listening to you today. So the question would be, you know, what message would you have for those young people? Um, it's to me, it's get a, I've always found a better, I, I, I'll give you an example. I've had some people that have gone through the union college route to do hospitality and have started off as an entry level, less than probably what I did, because yes, you can, read about things and yeah you will do for revenue and for accounts you do need to know obviously the bookkeeping side and everything like that but for 99 percent of hospitality jobs it's getting in at that bottom and learning from the bottom up and looking at all different departments so i i know when i started i did predominantly the bar then i went to do the restaurant but then i wanted to know how to do banqueting so i went and done that then i wanted to know about housekeeping so I went and worked in housekeeping, which, believe me, is the hardest job in a hotel. <laughs> it is such a hard job. But I know what they go through. So if you want to go on and be an operations manager, you have done all of those different departments. So if they come to you with a problem, you can solve it. So for me, it is it's getting in at the bottom. Um, there's it's not just big chains. There's a lot of independent companies out there that will invest in you. When a company finds the right person, especially in hospitality, and they have the passion for it, they want to learn, they will invest in you. So if you find courses you want to do, go to the company and say, listen, I really found this course. I really want to learn more about this. They will invest in you. There's a lot of MVQs out there. So it's not about, oh, I need to have a degree to do this, or I need to have you know a qualification to be an event manager. You don't get in at the bottom, learn the ropes up. Um, if you're lucky enough, you look for some great managers, um, work for some great managers like I've looked, worked for. I've always looked at my managers as my lecturers <laughs> because I've literally drained everything that they've told me. They could be hard on me sometimes, but they were hard on me because they were pushing me, um, if that makes sense. I remember one of my managers made me cry years and years ago because I was a bit soft. And then about three weeks later, he took me to do an event with him. And I was quite shocked that he asked me. And I, I remember when I finished my apprenticeship, three years later saying to Tony I was like I was quite shocked when you told me and he goes yeah but the only reason I shouted you is you've got the ability to do this he goes and I just needed to bring you back into focus he goes and the reason I took you with me is I knew you would do that job well and he used to take me on all his events then which was great because I got to do another <laughs> sector of it so yeah it's it's don't be afraid to push yourself and don't be afraid to go in at the bottom and just work hard to to build your way up.